When I cure bacon or salami or a ham, I am trying to invite mold. Meet everybody, mold. And hence we have the lovely mold. You can use mold as an indicator. It's an external sign of what's going on in the pork. It tastes wonderful. It's reminiscent of blue cheese. No mold penetrates and festers. If it's unappetizing, if it doesn't smell good, if it doesn't look good, then you can actually remove it. Putrefaction is bacterial. This here's a fungus. So you don't need to fear, fear the mold. And one of the signs that it's going good is this beautiful blue, white, green mold. Oh, it's so good. The mold really enhances the nutty flavor. You want it not to go bad, but to go good. It's just a fungus. I think I need to have a little bit more. The only thing that would prevent me from hanging under refrigeration is uh, stagnant air, you know? It just, and really, I mean, I would do it first. I would just try it a lot and see what happens. Um, because that's the only way you'll know. But refrigerators, they usually tend to maintain a pretty low humidity just because of the way refrigeration works, at least my limited understanding thereof. And uh, so it could work, but that's still, sometimes just doesn't seem to be enough. Um, meat that I've hung in the fridge, it just, I feel like it's moving air is, is a pretty important element to hanging. And so if you could introduce some movement, I think that would be nice, but really just try it, compare, you know, that's what I would do because refrigerators are all different too. Um, high thirties for a curing is okay. The thing is in, that might be a little cold actually, because here's the reason, the osmosis. So the salt, even after you rinse it off, dry the meat off and hang it, while it's hanging, the salt is still traveling. It's still osmotifying, it's still diffusing throughout the meat. It's called equalization, which is actually a process that Mr. Maynard Davies talks about a lot in this here book. He insists that the curing is not over until all the salt has equalized throughout the meat, um, which is a good point. So, and I know that that happens, equalization happens at above 41 degrees Fahrenheit. At least that's what, uh, that's what I've read. Colder than that, and I think it's still happening with salt, but it is so slow that it's possible, it's theoretically imaginable that on a big ham, it might spo spoil in the middle uh, because salt just hasn't had a chance to get there. Might, right? Only if there's blood in like the femoral artery. Um, but most of the time, it'd probably be fine. So that would be the only other risk in 30 degrees, in high 30s even, would be that the osmosis is just a little sluggish. The equalization is too sluggish. Um, so it's good to have it be more up in the 40s or the 50s even, 40s and 50s, uh, because that's where equalization will happen. Um, and the salt more readily traverses throughout the whole thickness of the meat. So there's no pocket of it, excuse me, no, you know, in the middle that is uncured or doesn't have a salty flavor because all the salt is concentrated on the surface to which it was applied. And it takes a kind of a while. I would say for bacon, which is thin and fatty, right? Minimum of 14 days hanging for that equalization to occur. Um, yeah, so I would say that... Uh, in the 90s, it'll totally work, right? I mean, I'm sure you've experienced this, Todd. Like, stuff cures fine at 90 degrees. I know I have. Um, and it's largely because it's so dry. It's a dry heat. And that dryness prevents the, uh, the environment from hosting bacteria. And it would host bacteria in in the catalyst that is free water, available water. But that dryness is just constantly wicking away, desiccating the meat and removing that. Um, so yeah, I, I would try both. And, but you know, the, for me, so much of the curing 
is the litmus test of whether or not I, I use that particular method is uh, how low, how simple is it? How low kit? And sometimes it's easier. Strange. Maybe this doesn't make sense, but it, it just seems to work for my household uh, to figure out how to cure things in 90 degrees. Then try to dial in a fridge and try to make it perfect. You know, uh, at least for me, uh, unless you just get lucky and the fridge works perfect every time. Um, usually I find it's easier. Eh, I'm just going to work with what I got, you know, 